Hi, welcome to Mimi Makes. I'm Mimi. Today we're going to learn how to make two pieces of cheese, a piece of cheddar and a piece of Swiss. They look like real cheese. They're scaled down so they will fit little hands and they're really fun to make. For this project you will need two colors of felt, a rather light wheat colored for your Swiss cheese and uh, a brighter color. You can use either yardage or sheets of felt. I recommend you use wool blend felt, not 100% wool because that's way too expensive. And felt that doesn't include wool is harder to work with. You also will need some embroidery floss or thread. Uh, I recommend you use embroidery floss. It's quite easy to use and the colors, you, you can match almost anything. But it's also possible in a pinch to use thread, but you'll need some of each color. So thread in both colors or floss in both colors. You'll need some scissors and you'll need some embroidery needles. I like them because they have larger holes so you can fit the embroidery floss through. All right, let's get started with our cheese. To begin your piece of cheese, hold your two cut out felt pieces together and trim so they exactly match one another. Then, starting at the middle of one of the sides, I'm using contrasting thread so you can see my stitches, but you'll want to use thread that exactly matches your felt. Split the two pieces and run your needle through the back piece. Of course you put a knot at the end. The reason for doing it this way is this will hide your knot on the inside of the cheese piece. Now take that thread and send it back through in a simple stitch. Try to bring it back as close as you can to where you placed the first stitch. Pull it through, center it. Now, we will start blanket stitching. When you do a blanket stitch, the blanket stitch always wants the thread to come from the middle. So let's run our needle underneath this and come out in the middle of where we're joining the pieces of felt and we can begin blanket stitching. I have a tutorial on my Mimi Makes It Fun channel on YouTube and it shows you exactly how to make this blanket stitch. So you just continue on until you reach your first corner. Now I'm going to flip this piece around because I've already prepped it to teach you how to do a corner. Again, your thread will match your felt so these stitches won't be noticeable. You take one last stitch on this row, bring the thread behind for your blanket stitch, Pull it through, and then let's take it right to the corner, hold your thread, and using your thumb, guide the stitch so it hits right at the corner. There we go. Then I take another stitch, stitch nearby, bring the thread behind. and pull it and you have your corner done and then you just proceed to continue to blanket stitch all the way around the piece of cheese until you reach the end and now let's skip ahead and I'll show you how to finish it off to finish your piece of cheese make your last few blanket stitches and you can see we're almost back to where we started And here's the last stitch, the last full blanket stitch. And you know, I like to make one more stitch above the one we began with, just so you don't have an unbroken line of, of the uh, thread at the beginning and end. There we go. Now, we're going to knot it. What I do is, I take my needle, I'm turning this piece around, I take my needle through the last stitch and the first stitch that we made, make a loop, pull till I have a small loop, I bring my needle through the small loop and pull which creates a second loop, I bring my needle through that, pull gently and end up with a very nice little knot. But I still don't want that knot to be visible, so what I do is I stick my needle between the pieces of felt, there we go, 
just like that. And I take it inside a bit and bring it out. Tugging just a little to pull the knot in with me, with the rest of it. And then I take my scissors, I pull on my thread, and cut the thread. And then if you bend it a little, the end will go right inside and you see no sign of your thread. And again, I used a contrasting thread for this to show you the stitches. So you may see a bit of orange here, but if it's matching, you won't see it at all. Now let's make the piece of Swiss cheese. Basically, it's essentially the same as what we just did on our piece of cheddar. We will eventually, at the end, take the blanket stitch all the way around the edge. But we need to do the holes first. You see the hole that's on the edge of the Mimi Makes pattern? That's where we want to end up. No matter which side we're sewing on, we want our thread to come out here. And that's so that we can just continue without having to knot and start all over again. Let's start with a hole that's farthest from where we want to end. So we'll start here, and then we'll work over to here, and then this one, and here, and then come out right where we want to be. Starting with this hole, pull down the top, and you have your floss. Take a stitch and pull it through. This is so you can hide your knot inside the piece of cheese. Close it back up, and what you're going to do is bring your needle through the hole, and take a stitch right as close as you can to where you went in on the other side. Okay, you've made your first stitch. Now, flip over the piece of cheese and we're ready to start blanket stitching. The important thing with the blanket stitch, and by the way, I have a wonderful video tutorial showing you exactly how to use the blanket stitch on the Mimi Makes It Fun YouTube channel, so look for that skills tutorial. The thread always wants to come out at the middle of the stitch. So let's just make, run the needle underneath it. There we go. And we're ready to proceed on our first blanket stitch. It's much like blanket stitching in a straight line. You just follow the curve. Take a stitch here, hold the needle through the hole, bend the other piece back. It's actually really easy to do. Put the thread behind the needle and bring it through. Oh, got a knot. I was hoping that would happen. Oh, no, we didn't. I at some point in these videos, I want to show you how to get out a knot because knots do happen. It just goes with the territory, but they're usually very easy to get out. Now I've made another stitch, brought the needle up through the hole. I'm wrapping the thread behind it and I'm pulling it through. And now you can see we've made three stitches. That stitch was uneven. It won't really matter because your thread is going to match the color of the felt and these stitches will become almost invisible. I'm, I poke the needle in and I bring it back out through the hole. I put the thread behind the needle and I pull it through. And so we continue all the way around. You can take tinier stitches, then you won't have gaps of thread in your circle. Or you can just take big ones and have a little fun with it and not worry. Again, I'm sticking the needle through the felt, out the hole. I'm taking the thread and putting it behind the needle and pulling it through. And you can see there's a little bit of thread that sticks up. If you take smaller stitches, you won't end up with that. I, I don't mind the look of it. And again, it's hard to see if you're using thread that matches the felt you're using. So you put the thread into the felt and out the hole in the cheese and go all the way around. I'm going to just take two more stitches here, spreading them out more than I normally would because I want to show you how to move to the next hole to continue. And this will be the last stitch. Into the felt, out the hole, thread behind, pull it through, and you've now done one of the holes. Again, as I've said several times, it won't be noticeable if it's in 
thread that matches the felt. Now we want to secure this one and I kind of I want to point out that there's no thread here so I usually repeat the original stitch just to bring the thread around all the way. There you go. And that should hold well. Take your thread to the right and what you're going to do is you're going to put it between those two pieces of felt. There you go. And you can also open the felt to guide your needle so that you don't catch felt as you go. Where's my needle? There we go. Bring it out. Now you're going to bring it to the next hole, which is over here. And you're going to do something very much like what you just did. You take your needle through and pull it out the hole. Be sure you don't pull this too tight. Just take a stitch like this. Whoops, excuse me. You're going to bring it through both holes. <laughs> there we go. So you just made that stitch. You're going to turn the felt over and we're ready to blanket stitch. Put the thread in the middle so that you can proceed. And then do blanket stitching around this one. The needle goes into the felt and out the hole. Put the thread behind the needle. Pull the needle through. And you've made your next stitch. And sometimes it looks a little crooked at this point, but when you do your next stitch, it will pull it back straight. Let's do a few more stitches. And then we'll skip to the end and I'll show you exactly how to finish this piece of cheese into the felt, out the hole. All right, I finished this piece of Swiss cheese and you'll see in this example I used thread that matched the felt and you can barely see the stitches. They blend really well so you don't need to worry about unanimity if that's something that you worry about. I don't. So at any rate, um, ostensibly you would have taken your thread from the last circle you finished and just dropped it down to here but I wanted to use a contrasting thread so I'm going to start again with a knot, but there's really no need to cut a new piece if you have thread left on your needle. You can just pull it down and proceed. Um, again, to hide the knot, you lift the top piece, pull it through, and just kind of fold it over. Close the cheese over it. This is so you won't see your knot. We will bring it around and do a single stitch that comes out close to where it went in doesn't have to be exact, especially if the thread is the same color. And there we have a single stitch. Now at this point you want to adjust your felt and make sure everything matches. Turn it over and you're ready to begin blanket stitching. Blanket stitching likes the thread to come from the middle, so we will run the needle under the stitch we just made just to get started, and now we are ready. You put your needle into the felt and come out wrap the thread behind the needle and pull the stitch closed and then we turn a little put the stitch in the felt come out in the hole <laughs> the half hole the thread goes to the back and you pull through when you get to the corner you can place a stitch right at the point if you wish Pull through, and then when you get very close to the end, hold your thumb right at the point and pull the thread, and it should stick right there or very close to it. Then turn and do another stitch on this straight. Pull it closed, and you've navigated that corner. But look what faces us, another corner. I think I'm going to go in the same hole for this one. And when you get close to the corner, place your thumb right there. And pull. And it's in position. Now I'm going to move on. Again, these stitches will not be noticeable if you're using a thread that matches the felt. So you don't need to worry about them being perfect. 
and just continue around the edge of the felt all the way as we did with a piece of cheddar cheese until you reach the end. And you end up with a very nice piece of Swiss cheese. There you have it, a piece of cheddar cheese and a piece of Swiss cheese all ready for your child's felt food sandwich. If you like this, please push the thumbs up down below and consider subscribing to the Mimi Makes It Fun video channel here on YouTube.